Surviving Infidelity My girlfriend led me to believe I got her pregnant, but I found it wasn't mine after the birth. I've been on Reddit a while and began lurking this sub when I first suspected my girlfriend was cheating. I had hoped I wouldn't be here posting, but here we are. I, 28 male, have been with my girlfriend, 25 female, for just about 2 years. The relationship was good, and then she tells me she's pregnant. For the most part, I'm careful and she said she was on birth control. I was skeptical but went to an appointment. I then figured it was just one of those things. I always wanted a family, so even though this was not how I wanted to begin, I was overjoyed. We're past the first trimester and I have her move in at her insistence. Insert red flag I missed, we're planning what we will do work-wise, and how to set up the baby's room. She is pretty insistent she will go back to work but be able to stay home. She swears she can make it work. I go to every appointment with her. Things are still good. We're in the third trimester and I make my schedule work to still go to every appointment. Up until this point, I had been at each appointment in its entirety. This one appointment, she's asks me to wait so she can talk to the doctor first. I'm super concerned that something is wrong with the baby and she didn't want me to hear. I go in and the checkup is done. Everything looks good. My girlfriend brushes off my concern over why I couldn't be there for all of it. Another red flag. We're about a month and a half from the due date and I notice her being kind of secretive with phone calls and texts. She tells me it's work and it's confidential etc. My antenna is now up, so I try to get looks at her phone. She's got Snapchat and Kick. I find it strange but don't confront her. The baby is born and I'm overwhelmed with emotion. The child is perfect and things went fine. Then comes the part where they want me to go on the birth certificate. My girlfriend becomes really insistent about it. She's constantly asking me to do it and seems way more anxious I've ever seen her. Here's the red flag I didn't miss. I don't do it. We have an argument, but she stops pushing. I think it's because she knows how suspicious it looks already. We're home and she have to go tend to the baby after it woke up. I notice she set her phone down to go to the baby. I couldn't help it and looked. It was still unlocked. I start looking for texts or calls. I then find a whole conversation on kick with a guy. All the updates of her appointments. Pictures of her and the baby. Then I see it. The place she says she thinks it's his child. I confront her and she apologizes. She admits the baby could be mine or someone else, but she thinks it's mine. I demand a paternity test and leave. It's been about a week since the confrontation. The results came in yesterday, and the baby isn't mine. She's gone to live with her mother. Here's the best part. It took me a lot of digging seeing as all I had were usernames she talked to him too. The father is her boss. The secrecy was for him. The boss with a wife and four kids in middle and high school. I found the wife on Facebook and sent her all I had including texts from my girlfriend saying it's his. I'm heartbroken in so many ways. I'm lucky in a lot of ways here, but I'm so hurt. This has completely changed my whole outlook. I'm bitter, angry and untrusting. I have no idea how to recover from this. Now for the top advice. Damn. I'm sorry. Dodged a huge bullet. That poor wife of the affair partner. Glad you told her. At least you are not tied to her like the affair partner's wife is tied to him. Literally no contact with your ex. She is trash of the highest order. I did dodge a bullet, but it hurts like hell. I'm thankful I could go no contact and not worry about a divorce or anything. I'm glad I waited on proposing, even though she was dropping hints all over. Turn them into HR department now. This 100%. You dumped her and exposed her affair and child to the affair partner's wife, good job. Now, take your time to grieve your loss, look after yourself and realize that you were fooled by who she lied to you to be, and that none of this is your fault. Then take another moment to think how lucky you are to have dodged this bullet, it doesn't feel like it, but you were darned lucky, it could have gone down way worse and cost you years of your life and a child you have already raised. The positives are you got out without legal obligations. You never contact that horde ex again. You did the right thing by informing the boss's wife. You are still in 20s. The positive is that he got out without emotional attachment too. How much worse would it be to be attached to the child as your own, and then have it ripped away? Legal slash financial, I agree with you, but emotionally it could have been even worse for him. The next story is titled. I, 24 female, just found out via DNA test that my sister, 21 female, is only a half sister. How do I approach my mother, 40s female, about this? All I want is the truth. Thanks in advance for the advice. 
I am staying with my mother until the 6th, so I have to talk to her soon. I will hopefully get this sorted out before I leave. Also sorry for the novel, it's been quite the situation. Background, my parents met in college, got pregnant, had me, got married shortly after, then had my sister, we'll call her Laura, three years later. They then got divorced when I was about six. My dad then got remarried to a woman he got pregnant. He and my stepmother have two girls now, both a good deal younger than Laura and I. My father gradually left our lives, after making it clear that he had no intention of taking care of us throughout our adolescence and teen years. Laura and I don't have a good relationship with him and have come to terms with only having our mom around. Our mother is a bit nuts, and acts like a teenager due to various amounts of trauma growing up and with having a kid so young. I did a lot of the caring for of Laura when we were growing up, and it was difficult but we managed. I don't really have hard feelings towards my mom for the way she behaves, but it's difficult being around her. Despite all that, Laura and I turned out pretty okay, and I know she sacrificed a lot for us due to our father being a piece of crap. I am currently getting my master's degree in a state quite far from my mother and sister. I am home for the holidays. The situation, I got one of those commercial DNA tests done last summer right before moving, because I was curious about my heritage since my family doesn't know much about theirs except that we're broadly European. It has been mentioned on my mom's side that we're French, German, British maybe. On my dad's side we have always thought Italian, Dutch, Polish. My DNA test came back as 52% Balkan Greek, something that was never mentioned by anyone in the family. When I got the results, I asked my mom and she brushed it off, saying it must be on my paternal grandfather's side or maternal grandfather's side, because we aren't very close with either of them. I can for sure say that is not true, because we know my paternal grandfather has a Dutch last name and my maternal grandfather has a German last name. Also, neither of my parents look Greek. Either of them would have to be very Greek for me to be 52%. I told her I don't think so, but she blew it off again. I also discovered through my DNA report that I have a first cousin that I don't know about. I have been in touch with this cousin and her mother is 100% Greek as far as they know. I asked my mother and she says she doesn't know said cousin. Laura and I started talking, and she decided to take a DNA test as well. We got the results back just a bit after midnight on New Year's, and we are in fact only half-sisters. She is also only 5% Greek, but is many of the things we thought on either side of the family. She is also the spitting image of our father, and I look much more like my mother, so we knew she had to be our father's bio child, and that I must have a different biological father. Laura and I have many theories about what went on. We've talked about it a great deal, but we are pretty sure our father still thinks I'm his child, otherwise we're pretty sure he would have brought it up in the divorce. He also treats us both pretty badly, so there's no favoritism to indicate anything. There could be other circumstances, however, I wouldn't be 100% surprised if my mom cheated on my dad. She also lived in California away from my father when she found out she was pregnant, and stayed there until shortly before she gave birth. I wanted to approach my mother and ask her who my father is and what is going on, but I don't know how or what to say. I don't want her to feel judged or attacked, I don't know the circumstances and I don't want to draw conclusions. Also, she's done her best taking care of us, and even if she did pass me off as another man's child, I really don't blame her because I knew she did what she thought was best. I also think I want to find my biological father if possible. I have a lead with the cousin if my mom does end up flat out lying to me, but I'd rather not have to entirely rely on that lead. Also, I don't want to be a family wrecker. I'm also slightly scared that my bio dad is going to be just as crappy as my supposed father, but I guess I'm prepared that that could be the reality of the situation. I'm kind of overwhelmed and a bit lost so any advice is very much appreciated. I really just want the truth. Thanks. Now for the advice. Just start with the no judgment part. Try to make it clear that you're not angry, only curious. You have proof, how far can your mom go with just lying? I think that your mom is just scared of the history. Maybe your dad's reaction? If she's being difficult remind her that this is about you, not her or your dad. And include your sister to this conversation completely, two people is harder to argument down. Whatever goes down it's going to be okay. I bet you'll figure out who's your dad. With or without your mom's help. Either way I can't see how loving mother would be angry about you wanting to know where you come from. Because going by all that OP wrote, her mother isn't a loving mother. Okay. Either way I can't see how her mother would be angry about her wanting to know where she came from. My mom does have her faults, and she gets angry when we try to show her that she does and that we know. 
If she sees this as an attack on her actions, she will get angry. That's mostly what I'm worried about. You can approach your mother if you like, if you'd like to know who your bio father is. Given that your dad isn't particularly involved, I don't think you need to contact him or speak with him. What I can tell you. Back 20 years ago I used to work in a lab that did DNA analysis for rare diseases. Situations like yours, where the oldest child has a different bio father than the rest of the kids, are far more common than you would ever guess, even in happy families where the parents stayed together. Young people party too much. Often, new relationships aren't all that exclusive. So, everybody is having great fun, sleeping with whomever, and now a gal is pregnant, and she and one of the guys are falling in love. Details? Who cares? They decide they'll raise a family together and won't let anything stop them. This sub is going to be really hard on your mom over this. But you don't have to be. The fact that it's common doesn't make it any less meaningful for anyone. Doesn't mean that family who raised you is less important. DNA is half of who you are, would be crazy not want to find out where the other half comes from. Now for the last story. 12 year old daughter isn't mine. So here it goes. My wife 38 and I 36 were high school sweethearts. We split when she went to college so around 18 months. In that time, she was, allegedly, violated and that is how my oldest, whom I adopted, came to be. About 6 years in, the wife felt bored at home after getting married so young, I was 19 she was 21. So, she goes and hangs out with her friend and doesn't tell me where she's going, she ends up spending the night, and I didn't find her until 6am the next day. This happens more and more, and then she goes to live with her friend and then fast forward 6 months. I have started a business and it is doing well, but I am more focused on that than my marriage. I am giving her hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars, to stay with her friend because her friend became ill. Well, I found out it was bars, and then I found out about all of the other men. 11 in total. 2 at once and 3 of them knew me and called me their friend. I was crushed. Something in me died. Something is still missing, and what's left is broken. We tried to work it out and it took time. But when my daughter was born I thought we had moved past it. We hadn't. A year after this all came to light, we had friends over and had a couple of beers and barbecue. Well, I went to bed around midnight and it was my wife and my best friend from high school. We are both exceptionally tall, I'm 6 feet 5 inches and 240 and he was 6 feet 3 inches and 210, and a lot of people mistook us for brothers. Well, she decided to blow him on my couch with me asleep in our bed not 30 feet away. I didn't find out for over a year. Well anyways, he was the second to the last F boy. The last one was a co-worker of hers. Always drinking and never off of any kind of substance. Well they go to a work party and they get drunk and screw, and 9 months later, I have my daughter. Unbeknownst to me, everyone that saw my daughter knew she wasn't mine, I just saw a tiny blonde haired blue eyed girl that stopped crying when she grabbed my thumb 5 minutes after being born. Every one of my wife's co-workers in our small town knew the entire time and said absolutely nothing to me. I found out later they would work with my wife, to get my daughter away from me to visit her real dad. When I found out she was not mine a year later, it completed my destruction. I stopped going to work. When I did go, I would get stoned and cry and scream and punch walls, and I opted out of my contract soon after. I would start driving around with a loaded 45 in my front seat, just trying to build up the guts to just put it in my mouth and end it, or pull it on a cop and have them do it for me. I found an old bottle of Percocet one night and I went to town. Fast forward to today. I got out of prison almost exactly a year ago. Six years for receiving stolen property and possession of a controlled substances. I lost my house. My life. Whatever extended family I had has passed on. I got my life together in prison though. Started teaching again, set up and instructed two inmate led programs to help them to develop new coping skills. I have a nice house and I have two nice jeeps that I own outright. I went and got my CDL to boot and have made nice money that way. My wife and I never got divorced. We didn't talk for two years and we started talking the last three years of my lockup, and now we live together with the kids. When we got together it was to see if things would work if we were both mature and agreed to certain criteria like therapy. Well, here is the deal. We have been intimate and I feel nothing. I don't feel that deep carnal attraction that we used to have. I don't feel anything other than friendship for her after this last year. I am not in love with her anymore. I don't think that I have been for years. I left the kids once when I was locked up. I can't put them through that again, but I feel like I need to do this and be honest with her if I ever want to fully heal from that trauma.
I feel like I need to move from this state and have enough distance to actually focus on rebuilding myself. I came back to the same town and have done a lot to better myself, but I am seeing it for the toxic cesspool it really is. Help. Now for the top advice. So, your wife is a massive lying treacherous garden tool, and you stayed after all that crap. Why? She lied, cheated, had children with other men. Over, and over, and over, and over again. And OP decided to just keep trying, over, and over, and over again. OP has basically wasted his entire life, not only wasted, but ruined it. Because he could not let go. I have no idea how exactly he expects people here to help, he knew what went on when he was 19. And decided to waste another 19 years, all his opportunities, chances, and options. And even if he breaks up now, he adopted those children and is responsible for them. Not that he will, he'll waste another 19 years. Sorry that you had to experience all that. It sounds like you healed from her during your time in jail and were able to leave all that crap behind, including your wife who caused that all. Go to a lawyer and finish what should have happened years ago. Then think about how you want to spend your life and do that. Honestly bro. I was an orphan. I have abandonment issues, and I had nowhere to go when I was released. It was life on the street with no money, or deal with my marriage problems and try and build a life from that. And you still fought and rebuild yourself up? Just take a minute to see how your life will be without your cheating ex in your life? I can say you'll be more happy and free in a while. You can still be a dad to your daughters, while working as a co-parent. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.